You know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right, are we ready? Wow. Okay. So we give assignment, yes or no? Good. Yeah, you know, I'm excited now. So because of the group leaders, we're able to follow through on the, on the assignment. We're not able. Is there something wrong? The two of you standing? The two of you. Come, come. What, what's wrong? Come. What's wrong? Yeah, and someone took your seat. Someone took your seat. Is this seat free? It's not free. Okay. Come and sit behind me. Thank you. Come and sit behind me. Is that okay? Sit behind me. Take the pastor's seat. Sit behind me. Exactly. Yeah. My sister. My sister. Look, look, look. Come, come, come. Come, come. Come here. Come here. I don't like you looking sad. Come and take free vouchers. Yeah, take. There was a free voucher here. Yeah. <laughs> come. Yeah. Come here. But you must smile. Because in our church, we don't, we don't boom. Yeah, come on, take free voucher. So now you have a Moroccan bat right here. Uh-huh. So you can go back and sit down. Praise God. Exactly. Amen. Always know that all things work together for what? For good. All things work together for good. All right. Praise the Lord. Gradually, we're coming to the end of this series, which is this month we'll come to the end. Next month, we're going to deal with another series, which is stopping fear. Yeah, stopping fear. A lot of people, fear has held them back, and we want to stop fear. We want to stop fear. It's going to be a very powerful series, you know. And fear can manifest in business, stopping business fear. That's your brother. It's a long time I've seen you in church. Yeah, I've not seen in a while. Come over here. Come and get a hug. You know, Why? So it, it, it thinks I don't notice. I don't notice it comes, doesn't come to church often. It sits at the back. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not seeing you. Because you know, he always behaves as if he's older than me. But meanwhile, it's like half my age. You know, praise God. And he's very handsome, very handsome, and very kind-hearted. You know. Why, why is your heart beating fast right now? Hmm? Did you vote yesterday? No, I didn't. You didn't vote. What's wrong with your voting? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. You, you, even build the emotions are coming out more now. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, go, go, go and sit down. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So, let me tell you what this is. So, we're going to. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to conclude this teaching. Then I would um, we'll move into fear, which will be next month. We'll move into fear next month. We're going to have a special night of worship in the fourth service alone. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to announce the date. Maybe next Sunday we'll announce the date so you know. And we'll move into just teaching about fear and how to. Because one of the biggest things that holds people back is fear. Fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of not being enough. Just a lot of fear hold people back. So we need to deal with it so that it can be released. But this more and more practical class I'm going to teach, then the questions you've answered would help me deal with issues very specifically. So let's come to John chapter 11. I'm going to lay the foundation. Where's my wheelbarrow? John chapter 11. I want to show you from those wheelbarrow. I used it differently in the first, second, and third service. I will use it differently in this service. Yeah. I'll use it differently in this service. I need very strong people to help me carry it. Where's the brother that used to lie on it? Where's the brother? Is he here? Where's the other wheelbarrow? Maybe you should put it over here, just at the back, so that I can. Yeah. Wow. Where's the other wheelbarrow? Do you have it? Yeah. John chapter 11. I need someone to lie in the wheelbarrow, but please make, I, want, I don't want something that is uh, heavy, you know. Probably a lady, probably a lady because of 
of skirts and all of that. Maybe one intro. That's probably a guy because of, I don't want someone wearing skirts. Okay, I found someone. Yeah. Okay. Just hold on. I'll tell you when to lie on it. John chapter 11. So remember that we've been dealing with this whole concept of dealing with relationship frustration and exhaustion. And the reason why we, were, we began to deal with it is because we explained that once you're frustrated or exhausted, it really begins to impact what? Every other thing. That's what we explained earlier on. And a lot of you um, have noticed a lot of dramatic changes in your life. How many of you have noticed some key changes in your life? Yeah. Give me, give me, give me a microphone. Who wants to share something you've noticed? You began to notice this frustration and you began to do something like you noticed something. Who, who wants to share? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Give the living glasses first. Yeah. Let me explain why you should share. Remember that we're doing all of these things to help and change people. If you don't share, it's very discouraging for me. Then the second thing is that your sharing helps somebody else in a big way. Yes, go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So, a um, few weeks ago, I, I mentioned what I was scared of. What were you scared of? And that was the, um, the frustration that was backing me from my mother. And he what, told was me that? what was it that? It was um, that the fact that I don't get help from people. Yeah. yeah. And he told me that, do I ask for help? And I said, no. And he said, I have time. So, I went back. I was having that thought in my head, okay. So, and you gave, um, you made a statement that helped me to come out of that. And when I asked for help, actually, I got the help. Wow. Did you hear that? She, she grew up with the narrative that I never get help. But she changed something, and now that she asks for help, she actually gets the help. That's really good. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, go ahead, um, sir. Man. Okay, so yesterday was my birthday, and... Um, oh, happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. Did you bring some cake today? Did I what? Bring cake? No. Not even for me? I'll, I'll bring next week. Next week? No. <laughs> okay. So but next week will be my home birthday. Yes. I'll bring for you. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so you can come on Sunday. I'm sure they'll, be, they'll I'll, I'll make it available. <laughs> so when I bring the cake, you bring the gift. Is that, is that a good sign? Yeah, continue, please. So usually on my birthdays, I always have like events. If I'm not doing something, you know, outdoor, I always do something in my house. But yesterday, being that it was election, um, I also felt so frustrated with where I was in life. I, I was just looking around. I was like, I'm losing a lot of friends. And it's not like I'm losing friends because of anything. It's just I know God is taking me out of, like bringing me out of certain relationships. And I'm happy. I'm grateful for that. But it's not easy. You know, because these are people that I've shared life with. It, so it's amazing because you already have a very good perspective, which is that I'm losing friends, but it's not that I'm losing them. It's more that God is bringing me out of my past. Yeah. So let me tell you what I think you should do. The more you focus on the thought of God bringing you out and not the thought of loss, the happier you'll be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because when people go to the gym and they see results, the gym is still painful. But the pleasure of the result overcomes the pain of the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. And then um, it was also a thing from the business perspective where it's like I know where I want my business to be at this. Like last year I was already prophesying that, you know, my next birthday I'm going to do this, do that. And I already know God's plan for me. I've seen the vision. But you know when you're just like, mm, I know it's going to come, but why not now? So, it, yeah, so it was just one of those things where I just kept crying the whole, like yesterday I kept crying and crying and crying. And my brother, you know, he tried to cheer me up, cheer me up with my siblings. Um, and the election did not help, to be honest. So it was just like a lot of frustration. Why, why did the election help? Um, because, I mean, people forgot my birthday, one, two. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't even do too much when you're doing those So why did people forget it, your birthday? Election. It was election. No. You know, people, no. people were like, oh my God, I'm send so them, sorry. Send them a message. It's my birthday today. <laughs> well, I just that. told you my birthday is next. Didn't I tell you? Yeah. So that you don't forget. I, I, I did that. Pastor, I did that no, actually. They, they send them the morning again. Send them the morning. Like my birthday morning, I put a post on Instagram. Happy birthday to me. In I did case that. you forgot. I, the reason why is this. There are things you can control. Mm. There are things you can control. Mm. 
people forgetting, you cannot control it. What you can control is you reminding them. Why not do what you can control? So you see, there's a certain way you felt because you were, you were trying to control what you couldn't control. This is a certain way you felt. If it's your birthday and you want a birthday gift and from someone that asked you, you'll be like, oh wow, this is my expectation. The person can tell you, I can do it. I cannot do it. They say that you're desperate because you know, they'll call you, you see, desperate. You see the challenge that you're trying to control what you can't control. Without doing that, would they call you desperate? Yes. People don't, you don't have to do anything to be called desperate. I hope you know that. Yeah. Exactly. So, th you see the thing, are you not seeing your pattern? Your pattern is that you, you really want to control people's response towards you. Mm. And you really don't have the power. What you have the power is to control yourself. Yeah. And that explains to me why you're not, you were also depressed. Because every time you try to, for example, you say about this is election. Elections are not what I can control. You know what I can control? I will kneel down and pray. I will say what I have to say. And that's it. I'm not going to use Panadol for someone that's a headache. I'm concerned and patriotic about the country. I will put on my position. But I know what I can control and what I can't control. Yeah. Okay. Is that good? Um, just, you know, I, I did my best. I don't know. I, I, I used out, hinted that my birthday is election day, you know, just used style and everything. But I think it's, like you said, you can't control it. You can't control um, it. And I don't not want to ask too much, to be honest. I just keep to myself. Mm. Why, don't you, why don't you ask too much? Why do you no, say you don't ask too much? Let me tell much? you, Pastor, people look at me, they, like, I keep telling people every year on my birthday, yeah. I get, like, minimum one or two gifts. People think, ah, oh, this babe already has. What can I get for her that she doesn't have? Okay. I know someone that was like, she was crying. She had to stretch herself financially to get me something. My, one of my cousins. And I was yeah. like, wow, I didn't expect you to dash me this amount of money. You did hear that? I didn't expect you to. <laughs> and the Bible says the expression, the righteous shall not be what? Cut short. So when you don't expect them to, is it that they don't? What are you saying? Your faith is working out actively. Your faith is so powerful, it does exactly what you say. I need your faith, though. Maybe if you start expecting some more. So, why don't you like expecting some more? Pardon? Why don't you like expecting some more? Expecting. Uh, why don't I expect this? I don't know, because the kind of circle I'm in, not circle, the kind of people that know me or know, I know, it's just. I don't know. It's just, what will I ask you to get from me? What will I tell you? No, I never said I ask. Know. I just said expect some more. Oh, personally, like yeah. inside of yeah. me. Okay. 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 Did someone just give you a gift just there? there? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank wow. you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm you. so jealous. Thank you. I'm kidding. Thank Praise you. God. Hallelujah. All right. John chapter 11. So thank God that the teaching is helping a lot. So this is what happens. This one teaching about frustration. I want to watch this. So where's the wheelbarrow? So who's helping me? Two more of you guys come. C come, and, come and help me. The two of you come. Yeah, Kadibi, or, or maybe um, Rashid come. I need people that are building. Yeah, come. This is very difficult too. This is very difficult. P put the wheelbarrow together. Close to each other. I want you to be in between it. If it's possible, if it's possible. Maybe you can sit down in one and put your leg in, in the other. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. Two of you carry your wheelbarrows. Watch this. This is what causes relationship and marital frustration. Look at me, everybody. You have two belief systems that oppose each other. So, when you say go, they begin to fight for you. Oh yeah, go in the opposite direction. <laughs> you see the problem? This is, let me tell you something. Let me help you here. I will give this example in business, then I'll bring it to relationships. In relationships, in business, you want to achieve success. 
But you also have rejection that you want to avoid. What do you think will happen to you? Because there's no way you want to succeed that you know what? Experience what? Some rejection. So what will happen eventually? Your fear of rejection will kill your success. Because you have two strong values that are what? Competing with each other. So for example, you want to love, but you don't want to risk. You want to love, you don't want to risk. Let me tell you something. The biggest example of love is God. Is God. Did God risk? How did he risk? He created Adam. Didn't Adam turn against him? Did God, what did God now say? God formed the way to create another Adam in Jesus Christ. So, what you need to ask yourself, this love, so in one area of relationship, I want a happy marriage, I want a great relationship, but what is the other thing? Because what happens to you is this, and let me show you the principle, James chapter 1. I want to show you the principle in the Bible. I mean, I'll come back to John, James chapter 1. I want to show you. So, this is, this is what is causing the frustration and the stagnation of the relationships. James chapter 1. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. James chapter 1 verse 8. See what the Bible says. The Bible says this. Let's read together. I want to go. James chapter 1 verse 8. I want to go. Let's read together. You can read from your Bible. It's not on the screen yet. I want to go. A double-minded man is what? Is unstable in what? That's what I'm going to. So, if you are double-minded and in one place you want love... In another place, you want to avoid risk. Because the truth is that there's no way you're going to love without, avoiding, without risk. So what will happen if eventually, in the two of them trying to carry him, is either going to fall off and become stagnated, or the stronger value will carry him away. And in this case, this is a stronger value because that's where more of his weight is. So, I'm saying so because when you come to relationship stagnation and frustration, you need to, ask, and that's why the assignment I give is very powerful because you need to find out. Because I want to let you know, God is faithful to you. I need you to know that you don't have really all these problems you say you have. Sometimes it's the belief system that gets in the way of what God is trying to do. So, you really want to love, but you don't want to risk. Who is like that here? Okay, let me, ask another, let me ask the second question. You can put him down. Thank you. And you can take it with the wheelbarrow. The second question is this. What do you think, what belief do you think is getting in your way of love? That it's fighting it. It's fighting it. Yeah, you can give it to her. And the people at the back, I also want to reach today. Yeah. Good afternoon, Pastor B. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm unlovable. You feel that what? I'm unlovable. You feel like you're unlovable. So, you see... In one way, she wants to be loved. In another way. So, in her, there are two value systems that compete. And the two of them are what? Pulling her towards the other. One says, you'll be loved. The other one says, yeah, I'm unlovable. Who will win? The one that has what? The higher say. Let me get someone else on the back. You know, let me get uh, someone else on the back. And I want you to, if you can tell me a story that can implement it to me. There's a lady on my left hand side. Yeah. There's someone in the choir also. Yeah. Oh, wow. Many people in the choir. Yeah. Where are you? They, raise up your hand again. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. So, um, my, I think what, you know, is in the way of me um, finding love or being in a relationship is I feel like, I mean, from my experiences, I feel like, if a man, you know, is, if a man goes out of his way, you know, shows me with his actions, does for me, things like that, I feel like, okay, yes, it is safe to love. If you're not going out of your way, you're not, I, I, I don't feel like, you know, it is safe. I don't feel your intentions are, you know, good. Okay. I'm not sure that's totally a bad thing. It depends on the phase of relationship you are in. 
if I just met you, I want to go out of my way. It might not just be proportional. For example, now, you met a girl today, tomorrow, you're like, ah, my car broke down, only give me money. I say that you didn't go out of your way. <laughs> I understand that your feet doesn't go out of your way, but at the stage of that relationship, it's inappropriate because mm. you yourself, your expectations are different. But if you guys are really in a relationship, there'll be nothing wrong to be like, oh, this is happening. Is everyone, you can act me out with it. Help me out with it. What do you think? You think so? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, the song in the choir. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, okay. This microphone is not working. You can turn off that one, so I don't feedback. Yeah. Okay, so um, my mom, or my parents rather, um, my mom had um, domestic violence to deal with. My dad always beat my mom, yeah. and we grew up knowing that. Yeah. And my mom was still the good woman. In fact, till this moment, she still tells us not to hate him. But, and she's too soft. She, she doesn't want to fight back. And yeah. she, she still takes those things. We so, can't even so fight what, for her. So what mindset does that so, affect you? And yeah. Personally, I have a different perspective about men. Okay, what perspective if, if do you have? If fear was there... What perspective do you have? So that any guy I get married to... In fact, I was in a relationship that... What perspective do you have? What perspective do you have? That I would be beaten. I would have to experience what my mom is experiencing. Okay, personally. good. So... so, so the unfortunate thing about that perspective is that mindset will take you to where, what, what do you call it? Where, where, where you believe. So do you, do you ever date someone that beats you or tries to beat you? Yes, I have. Uh-huh. I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I'm not a witch doctor. But it's just straight. What you believe will eventually what happened to you. You know why? The reason why is that you will keep jumping the choices until you come to that person that will beat you. You know why? I will look up here. The mind gravitates towards what is familiar. So if abuse is familiar to you, it will take you there. If pain is familiar to you, it will take you there. You will find a way to get there. That's why a lot of you that want to lose weight, when you go for a buffet, you gravitate towards food that make you gain weight. Yes or no? So it's not what you desire. It's what you're used to. The reason why is that the mind just keeps you safe. If like... You are used to this, and you do it. Okay, so let, let, we're going to talk about how to, really deal, how to really deal with this today. We want to really get, because we want to get really practical. So the key thing now is that, so this is why we're dealing with this. So a lot, of, a lot of people are very negative. But I think most people have what is called mixed association. So there's a bit of um, a value that wants to achieve that goal, but it's also another value that what pulls them back. So there's that tension between this. And that's the reason why they are frustrated because they go three steps this way and they go what two steps this way. But, the, but you cannot get rid of it except you know what those fears, those values, or those mentalities are. You can get hold of it. You can't. Praise the Lord. You can't get to the world except you know what those values are. All right. So, very good. Very good. So, let's, let's go deeper now. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. The Bible says in verse 38... And Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, come to the grave. And it was a cave, and a stone, watch this now, a stone was laid upon it. And Jesus said unto them, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of the Lord, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. And Jesus Christ said, should I not say unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shalt not see the glory of God. What Jesus was saying, that Jesus was saying to them, it says, I want to touch Lazarus. But there is a barrier, which is what I'm going to. There is a fear. There is a mindset that cannot allow my power to touch. And listen to this. This is why with all the prayers, with all the faith, 
nothing has really changed for you in relationship. And the reason why there is a stone, and Jesus Christ says that if you don't take it away, I, my power will not be able to what? Penetrate. The stone is a mindset, is an emotion that stays in the way. So, in this session, all we've been trying to say is that what is the stone that's making, I'm praying for relationship, I'm praying for marriage, what is the stone that is not allowing it to work? What is the stone that's not working? Something I thought in the thought service, I said, one of the things you have to control, to control the life, is to control your focus. And I said, to control your focus, there are three or four patterns of focus I discussed. I said, do you focus on what you can control, or what you can what? Control. Do you focus on what is missing or what is what? Available. So what does that mean? See, you are single right now. And you, what do they call it? Your boyfriend is with you. But he, maybe he's not very caring. Caring in the sense that he doesn't talk a lot. And all of a sudden, you forget that this guy is faithful. He's generous. But he's not just kind with words. You forget everything it does, and your focus is what is missing. And I said, every time you focus on what is missing, what happens to your life? You become unhappy and what? Very depressed and frustrated. But what I want to ask you right now is that, are you focused on what is missing or what is available? Question, are you focused on what is missing? And I, this story is very powerful in the Bible. In John chapter 5, Jesus Christ walked to the pool of Bethesda. There were a lot of sick people there. A lot of sick people. Jesus, maybe, Bible says a multitude, multitude like 5,000. Jesus heals one. Did you notice how the Bible excluded other people and focused only on what was done? The Bible is always fond of reporting what is done, not what is undone. We are focused on looking at what is undone, not what is done. Behave like the Bible. You know, if one person was healed, you know how I would have felt, my former me? I would have felt that, Lord, what about the remaining 4,000 people that are not healed? But look at the Bible. The Bible puts a whole story around one person that was healed. So question, do you focus on what is missing or what's available? And when you focus on what is missing, you become sad, you become angry. Every time you're sad, ask yourself, am I focusing on what is missing or what's available? Because once I focus on what is missing, I become sad and angry. When I focus on what is available, I become grateful and joyful. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. This, very, this is life-changing for me. Yeah. So if you're going to change your life, you're going to change the focus. And the reason I'm saying that is that someone says, how do I change my frustration? I say, you have to change your frustration by changing your focus. By changing what is, what, what is available. And what is missing? Do you focus on the past or, or the future? You know, a lot of people are frustrated. Should I actually want to focus on? On the past. They always hold on to the relationship that not work. And where they suffered. And they forget the one that worked and made them happy. Is it not true? And even when they think of the one that made them happy, they think of it in regrets. That why did I let it go? Instead of thinking of, wow, it was so good why it lasted. And when you focus on a painful past, what happened to you? You have a painful present. Isaiah 43 verse 18. It says, remember not the former things, neither what? Consider the things of old. Let me write in your notes. Am I focused on what is missing? Or what's available yeah when you write it there yeah your friend let your name someone sit next to you let me ask you and give you the answer of course nothing can be 100 percent, but most of the time which one are you focused on if your friend is focused on what is missing raise up your hands please no talk to me Ask the person next to you. Just ask them, are you focused on what is missing or what's available? If your friend is focused on what is missing, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. 
Okay, put down your hands. Put down your hands. Okay, this is a question. Ask the person next to you, are you focused on what is missing or what's available? And when you ask, let the person also ask you back and you get the answer. Okay, get the answer. All right. All of you online, put in the comment section. Put in the comment section. All of you online. Are you focused on what is missing or what's available? Can I give an example? Let me give an example. A lot of you are dating right now. Watch it. A lot of you are dating right now and you're not married. And you're like, I'm so tired of dating. I want to get married. You're focusing on what is what, what is missing. Someone is even praying, if I can have someone that can be asked calling me. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Some of you are single. Some of, some of you are single and you're like, I have nobody in my life. But you forget the beauty of being single. You can enjoy yourself. You can travel. But you're focusing on what is missing. Okay, so ask your neighbor, are you focused on what is missing or what's available? Okay, if you're focused on what is missing, or you, your neighbor is focused on, your, if your neighbor is focused on what is missing, hands up. Hands up. Put on your hands. If it's what's available, hands up. I'm, I'm interested to know. That's great. That's great. The reason why is that if your pattern of focus is what is missing, what will happen? You'll be depressed. You'll be unhappy. You'll be frustrated. If you focus on what's available, what happens to you? Even your thoughts. So when you're frustrated, when you're frustrated relationship-wise, what are you focusing on? Wow. Are you seeing the source of your frustration? It's your focus. Your focus on what? What is what? Miss it. What's going through your mind? Give her the microphone. This lady. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Give her the microphone. Why didn't I give you the seat so I can ask you questions? That's how we should have gone to the back and enjoy what was available. That the back seat was available, but we're fighting for it. So you found what is missing. Yeah. Tell me. What went through your mind? It, it was a story. Something happened that you, your mind flashed back. Yeah, tell me what it was. No, so before I came to church, me and my baby. What? Uh, me and my boyfriend were trying to settle. <laughs> I was complaining about so many things, right? And. <laughs> you feel stupid. Is that the word? You feel stupid, right? <laughs> You felt your complaint was unnecessary, so, right? I feel like I have been too focused on, okay, you are not doing this, you are not doing You're this. too focused on what? You are not doing this, you are not doing this. What is what? Missing. What is missing? Question. When you focus on what is missing, how do you feel? See, I will not lie. I will be frustrated. Frustrated? <laughs> I will just say, ah, girl, you will not frustrate me. <laughs> oh, you will tell everybody you will not frustrate me. In my, in my mind, though, in my mind, in my mind, I will say, girl, you will not me but who is frustrating who now? <laughs> is it the one frustrating you're frustrating yourself? I don't realize. It's me that is taking, is overthinking things. Thank you. <laughs> so, so I, I love that. Did you see that? She's the, one, she's the one frustrating herself. Listen to me. Can I help you? In every relationship, there will be what is missing. And there's what's available. The way you will know if you'll be happy in a relationship is that if two of you be happy, if two of you can find a pattern of staying on what is available, you will be very happy. But if two of you or one person is always emphasizing what is missing, you will be very unhappy. You want to ask, yes, tell me. That lady. Yeah. Go ahead. Just raise up your hands again so that you can be seen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Well, what I want to talk about is not about just relationship. I two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago or three weeks ago? I listened to you preaching about taking responsibility. Okay. Before then, I was very depressed, suicidal, frustrated, 
Like, I can't believe I'm here today. I came all the way from after Festa to be here today wow. to show you how much my mindset has changed. So I went through so much last year and the beginning of this year. And then... And when you were going through a lot, were you focused on what is missing or what I happened? I was focused on what was missing. Wow. Like, I know if I start saying this story, everybody say, hey, yeah, all this kind say of stuff. Say the story. Let's say, hey, yeah, for you. <laughs> Please listen. Let, let me tell you something. Fourth service, we love gist. <laughs> Say this. Just two minutes version. Two minutes, not not too much. Two minutes version. So yeah. I quitted my job. Then I was taking a course for an internship. I lost the Put internship. I lost the internship. Then my job. Then our accommodation. All of a sudden, something happened, and we had to leave. Wow. Then my daddy left. Then we paid for a place. Then we were scammed. That was like all the money I've saved. We've saved. Like it was just too much. Mm. I was frustrated. Then we had to stay in the apartment like that. The apartment was not even completed. I had to stay there with my mom without windows. Like we had to live there. Wow. And I was like, is this how life changed? Like just in a split of five months, my life has changed this much. Then I was just too frustrated because that. I was supposed to go for my NYC. I did not go because of that course. I wanted to finish it. I'm like, no, this is too much. Then nothing has changed. But I've achieved so much in the space of two weeks. Listen. As in, this is powerful. This is powerful. You know, situation is still the same, but the result is different. And the reason, so what is the reason? I just changed my focus. Like, I started looking at what I have. I can't even believe I'm here saying this today because I'm a very shy person. I actually... So good. So good. So last night, while I was praying, I could not even pray. I was just crying. I'm like, I'm so blessed. Look at her. She's leaving the house without windows. And she was thinking, how did my life just fall apart? How did it get here? But nothing changed. In two weeks, she took... See, she took responsibility, let me tell you, of a belief, of her emotions. As she took responsibility, she changed her focus from what is missing to what's available. All the results. You know what I'm saying though to you? This is what we need to do today. What someone needs to do is to listen and do and not just listen. I've never been this happy in a long while. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm very, very happy and wow. I'm really grateful to God. Come, come, my sister. I want to give you a hug. Oh, come, my sister. I want to give you a hug. Oh, so pretty. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Thank God. Thank you. Give her the microphone. I wanted to say what. Yeah, tell me. And you were watching online, right? Tell me, yeah. Sometimes it's not just what is happening to you, it's just how you are seeing it. Well, you said thank you, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Other stars have changed my life. Like, thank you, Pastor B. Praise God. You know, this is a powerful story. Let me tell you why this story means a lot to me. You know, I'm, I'm even getting emotional. Why the story means a lot to me is this. Is that you can find peace in the midst of the storm. You, you need to realize that our peace is not from the outside. That our peace is from the inside. And look at this girl, she's a, I can tell you, not more than 27 at the maximum. And you can tell that she found peace. You want to hug her? Come and hug her. Family right now, and it's 
very difficult for us to pay your rent. So my sister called me yesterday and she was, you are the only person left. <laughs> are you going to do it? I said, I have someone I want to sleep with tomorrow <laughs> to give me the money. And she just <laughs> encouraged me. <laughs> no, no. Thank you, Jesus. That way, we have an opportunity to share hope with people. You know, never realize how tough and how broken people are and that's why sometimes we say the harshest words to them and sometimes it takes all the courage to stand and, and thank you because look at that young lady a lot of you are better than I but you're still not grateful you're still focusing on what is missing she said we we'll live in a house without windows the other lady said do you know what it means to come out uninvited and she said in, in, in a whole place like this where she knows she has friends and said my only choice is to stick with someone tomorrow to pay the school fee, to pay the house rent <sighs> and the only reason that story came out is because I want to share the story of hope and I'm saying this because because sometimes people don't understand what we do People criticize us, and I understand, because you've not been in my shoes, you've not, you've not seen the pain that I carry for people, you've not seen that pain. You know, you've not seen that pain at all. If you're a genuine pastor, you would carry pain for people, and that pain sometimes would really alter how you see things because you want to be more helpful and you want to be right at the same time and it's a commitment we must have for ourselves you know and the reason that this is important to me is that some of you the change is happening some of you there is no change but you can find peace in the midst of the storm if you choose to focus on what is available and not what is missing. You know, when I come and teach you, everybody, oh, Pastor B has it all sorted out. That's not true. I have things to fight. I have things to struggle with. I have things I'm praying about. But every time I step here, 
There's one thing on my mind to focus on what is available, not what is missing. And many of you, the reason why your potential has not come out is that you're focusing on what is missing and not what is available. And God is saying that focus on what is available or what is missing. And, and that's a big message today. So we say, I have no man, but you have a mother that loves you. You have a father that loves you incredibly. You have siblings that love you. So I'm a single mom, but you have a child that loves you like crazy. Why are you not focused on what is available? Why are you focused on what is missing? Some of you are watching me from Canada and from the US, and you're like, well, I just need the man. Do you know the opportunity you have that some of us here, like, if I get a visa, I will never come back in my life? No matter how bad it is in the UK, you get a council flat. And some of us need to just repent of being ungrateful. How do you step out of frustration? By focusing on what is available, not what is missing. Everybody get out your pen and bio, get out your phones. Write five things you are grateful for. Write five things you're grateful for. Think about it. What are you grateful for? Who is in your life that you're grateful for today? How does that make you feel? What do you have in your life that you're grateful for? What did God save you from? What did God save you from? What did God save you from? What did God do in your life that you're grateful for? What should have happened to you that God prevented from happening to you? And when you write it, go over number one and think about it. Be in that moment. Be in that moment. Be, be in that moment. Be in that moment and think about everything that happened. Be in that moment. Be in that moment. Think, look at your list. Be in that moment. Look at All of you online, take a moment and write five things you're grateful for. Amen. How do you feel? If you still feel frustrated, raise up your hands. How do you feel? You feel grateful?
Don't become entitled in life. Have an attitude of gratitude. You know, as I'm talking to you, many memories are running through my head. And I'm grateful. I'm really grateful. And if you stay in a place of gratitude, you will have a lot more in your life. The only person that had the complete miracle amongst the ten leper was the one that stayed grateful. One day I was praying for the sick and the lady came to me. And she said, I was born without a womb. She said, I didn't even think about marriage. Because there's nothing to look forward to. She said, I don't have the desire at all. Because I have no womb. I'm grateful. The reason I'm saying so is that when you stay in this state, you will see things work out. Things turn out better than ever. And that's why Jesus Christ said in his word, he says, in all things, in all states, give thanks. I, I, I want to get the microphone. I want to, um, I've shared a lot of my story. I want someone to share the story. This lady over here, I want to share your story. <laughs> yeah, the lady in black, tell me. And let me tell you something. <sighs> yeah, tell me, yeah, give it. Alright, church. So, um, for several years, I used to have um, a lot of issues with my mom because, you know, like it's natural as women to just fight every time, right? Daughter and mother fight all the time, and for the longest time of my life, I kind of like despised my mom, right? And at the end of the day, after like 35 years of marriage between my parents, they're no longer together, right? And I kind of like didn't, I didn't interfere and I was living with my, like my dad, right? And this happened 2020, so it was it's still very recent, right? So my mom moved out and everything. I was still living with my, my dad. I mean, I grew up there. Um, I'll be 30 next month, and I have never lived outside my parents' place before. So um, last year, I mean, I started a business, sorry, in 2021, and it was doing very well. I resigned from my job. I didn't have any money to start the business but and i was kind of like asking god what i wanted to like what he wanted me to do i wasn't sure of what i wanted to do and then he gave me a vision of um making shoes and i don't i don't even know where i got the motivation from and I started the business and it was doing very well. Not until last year, my dad sold the house. Imagine living with your parents, living with your dad in the same house and all my other siblings, they are in the UK and the only one here living with my dad and taking care of him. And my dad sold the house without my knowledge. So it's like two months to live in the house, vacating the house and I get to know that my dad had sold the house. So this is somebody that's never rented a place before, nothing, and I, my business, I had to make some payments over, over 10 million to make the shoes that I sell. And I was still looking for the balance to pay, only for me to get to know that my dad has 
sold the house and then we have like two months to vacate the house. And then I'm looking at myself like, how will I do this? I have that mindset, nobody helps me because I'm very independent, I've been like that. So how did that turn out eventually? At the end of the day, like hearing this lady speak today, I just realized that I ought to be grateful because I could afford to even, at, even at that moment when I didn't have money to balance off for my business, I still sold my goods and balanced the payment I needed for my business, still looking for almost five million naira to pay for two years because the landlord was asking for two years. Pastor, I don't know how I was able to make that payment. And I still make that payment and I was still able to finish. And how is your business right now? My business is fantastic. It's even bigger than what it was. Yes, and I am kind of like, these tears i crying right now, it's, it's tears of guilt. Like, so you can afford to do all of these things yourself. And listening to the other lady crying that she, she didn't have, they had to move and she was scammed of all that she had. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to explain how I actually feel from within me. My sister, God elevated you and you did not know it. I didn't. God carried you and you did not know it. I didn't. But now, yeah, I you know realize. It. Amen. Let me tell you what I think you should do. I want to, this is, I think this is a good place to just close the service. In one of the services, one of the ladies said, my mother died of sickness, my father died of sickness, and I have the fear that anybody in my family will die of sickness. And when he said that, I asked, in your family, how many times have people been sick? 100 or 200 times. I said, uncountable. I said, they recovered all the time they were sick, except two times that they died. And you're going to have a mindset based on two times that something happened. That's human nature. Focusing on what is missing and what is available. The 200 times they survived, you never thought about it. The two times something happened. That's when you thought about it. It's something you have to fight against. Something you have to fight against. That entitlement, that lack of gratitude. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. The two ladies come. Can I pray for you? The two of them come. Yeah, I want to pray for you. You're amazing. You, you're amazing. So where do you people live now? Amuo or where? Um, Koka. Koka. That's in your world to... You can go into Mount Tu. Yeah. You're amazing. How much do you have to send to your parents for the rent? Okay. And you? Okay. Okay. So the two of you, I would give you, you know, five hundred thousand, and you will have five hundred thousand. My lady, you don't have to sleep with anyone. 
Jesus loves you and has provided for you. He has. He has. He has. When we are coming to church today, God had it in mind. Tell me. Yeah. I came today because I was able to send, my brother was able to send me out of the payment because okay things was going well for us before my dad died. It was kind of trying to send me to school outside the country, but I was able to do it for my brother. So since the day he died on my hands, I was like, oh, this is it. I need to push forward. I started selling things online, did a lot of business, you know, but it was not working. So yesterday my sister called me and my sister was like, Oh, are we going to fix it? Blah, blah. And she so said, you call back your sister and say, Jesus fixed it. Yeah. And, and the tears are over. Jesus fixed it. Amen. So this is what I wanted to do. After service, look at Shibomi, will you come? Look at one of our leaders here. Just go to meet him and give him your details. You have to tell me. I wanted to come with my mom, but she told me that. But they said it's for um, widows because my daddy left because of this crisis we had last year. So he left. He left us. So I don't know. I don't know what to say. But the thing is, when I when how it started was when I joined NLP. I you said we should be giving thanks for 21 days. Then it did not make sense because. What do I want to be thankful for? That was how I started. But then I started waking up at night. I just thought, I would just give thanks. Praise God. Give thanks. And all of a sudden, I found out that I was becoming really happy. Then I found a place to use lights because I code. And I started coding. Like, I was, I was happy. I've never been that happy for a long time. Praise God. And now, I'm here. And Did you come with someone? You came by yourself? Your sister is here. Come. Look at the sister. This is what we do in church. What do you have to say? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come over here. You're close to the speaker. Yeah. She's my cousin. Yeah. So yeah, I was away when a sister called. I was my cousin to call her, and I've seen her struggle. I've seen her do things just to send to the family, and I'm really not happy about it. So when her sister called, she was just crying and all, and I understand. I could not able to talk to her, but. After coming here and <laughs> praise God, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. The next thing is that you will not just get the money. I'm going to ask one of the business ladies in church to take you and train you. <laughs> praise God. It's well. Praise God. God bless you. You can go back to your seat. So see pastor after the service. Amen. Okay, I got some notes that some of you are interested in paying and helping out with this. They would... You're very smart. <laughs> you know why you say you're very smart? Because the Bible says, He that helps the poor lends to God. So every time you see an opportunity to help, it doesn't matter if it's everything. If it's your 10,000, let it enter. Praise God. You're very smart. I, I would, um, Ben, is the Ben there? Will you put, I've given them a, an account number they can put on the screen and you can, what do they call it? You can use it. Yeah, you can take, you can use it. If you're online and you want to participate, you need to send the message because you can only do it within Nigeria. There's no way we're going to get the money outside the country and be able to do that. Wow. 
Daddy with the pampa. Sunday and I'm we really need to conclude this we need to conclude this when you're coming next Sunday I give some assignments all of us belong to a group I want everyone to do it in the group yeah write what pain you associate write what you're grateful for those questions I'll put it on my social I'm not in my best state so I, I'm able to you know is good and God is kind. He is he is a good God. Oh. Let's pray. Father. Once again we pray. this way. Don't raise them up. Just just a little. And say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you 
for showing me your kindness. I'm grateful for your hand in my life. I know you're at work. Even when I see it and when I don't see it. Today, I receive your love. I receive your mercy. I receive your grace. You have blessed me in more ways than I could ever imagine. I am grateful. I, I am grateful. Grateful. Seat. 